I'm Cassandra and I work with ThetaCare. I'm also a busy mom of three. Camden, no thanks, hey. Doing it all is more challenging than ever and that includes making healthcare decisions. So, welcome to Health Inspired Talk, where we cut through the confusion, we chat with experts and we help you get the care you need for you and your family. Here at ThetaCare, we're on a mission to improve the health and well-being of the communities we serve, empowering individuals to live their unique best lives. As a part of that, we're dedicated to providing exceptional care close to home. When you think of healthcare, you might think of a visit to a clinic or a hospital. But when it comes to your overall health and well-being, that's much more than the care we can provide within the walls of our hospitals. Other important factors include access to food, job opportunities, clean air and water, and housing, just to name a few. And that's where Life Inspired comes in. As part of this movement to create a healthier future for all, ThetaCare must understand our communities. That means taking proactive steps to promote healthier living before health issues arise, and then being there to provide care when you need it most. When we launched Life Inspired earlier this year, we introduced the movement with an event focused on food insecurity. Hundreds of ThetaCare team members gathered to assemble food boxes to distribute to those in need. Next in the movement, the issue of secure and stable housing. In this episode of Health Inspired Talk, we look at what home means and the critical role it plays in our lives. We know how important it is to have safe, stable, affordable housing, so let's examine why. Joining us to talk about that is Paula Morgan, Director of Community Health Improvement for ThetaCare. Paula, thanks for being back with us. Yeah, pleasure. Enjoy being here. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about what makes it so crucial to have safe, affordable, and that stable housing for people. Housing has a huge influence on health, and it really falls into four different categories of, of how it influences health. One is just the quality of housing that you have. You know, does it have asbestos or lead? or is it safe? Affordability. Many people in our community are spending more than 30% of their household income on housing, which means they don't have money for other things like health care. Location is critical. Is your house in a place where you have access to parks and to grocery stores and to work and to school and transportation? Last category is community. Do you live in a place where you feel you belong, you feel safe, and where you have social connection? Absolutely. So when we think about safe, affordable housing, like you're explaining, what does that look like in our region, in our communities? Yeah, well, we just conducted a community health needs assessment about a year ago, which means every every three years we go out and do that to try and really understand what the most critical health needs are in the community. The biggest social need that we heard from our communities was housing. Every single market, all levels, not just lowest income. What we're really striving to do is create conditions in the community that make it possible for more people to thrive. And if all we're doing is paying attention to housing after the fact, after it's a problem, there's no way we can sort of band-aid our way to a, a healthier community. So what we really want to do is focus upstream to create the conditions for health and well-being in the first place that allow more people to thrive. We know that to achieve our vision for creating a healthier future for all has to take place outside of our walls. It's not just one healthcare system or one organization that can do this. So tell us a little bit about the partnerships and, and things that we're doing to help in our neighborhoods and communities. Yeah, absolutely. This isn't work that any one organization or institution can do on their own. It does take a, a, a village. One uh, way that individuals as well as our organization can partner in the community is with United Way. United Way supports so many different housing initiatives, housing organizations in our community. So that's one um, very obvious, uh, immediate opportunity for everyone to get involved and to, to partner in our community. A second effort that is maybe a little bit more of a niche for us is um, in the space of sober living. The sober living homes can really be an incredible bridge to coming back into community fully. And the third area that I'm most excited to share with everyone today is inspired to fight for healthy housing. Our own team members can volunteer in the community, personally get engaged in helping to build housing for people across our region. So we are partnering in three of those locations with Habitat for Humanity, most people know of, of Habitat. So in the next month and a half, our own team members will have ample opportunity to get involved and personally help to make um, 
housing better for our region. All right, Paula, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Joining us next is Amy McGowan, Director of Development for the Greater Fox Cities Area Habitat for Humanity. Thanks for being with us, Amy. Thank you, Cass. I'm happy to be here. So first of all, start off by telling us a little bit about Habitat for Humanity and the work that you do. Sure. Um, Habitat is focused on serving uh, people that are unable to afford a home. And uh, we look at people that are either unable to purchase a home right now. And so Habitat helps homeowners prepare for home ownership and then build their home and helps them prepare to pay a 0% interest mortgage. We also help homeowners that are already living in homes but aren't able to keep them in good repair. And so we help those homeowners with those repairs so that they can continue to live safely in that home. Now you have an event coming up, Rock the Block. What is this event and, and how is it helping neighborhoods? There will be close to 300 volunteers at Doty Island and we'll be working on more than 30 or 30 plus residential homes and also 10 community projects. And when we're working on the homes, we'll be doing home repairs, roof replacements, uh, siding, lead abatement at times. And we'll also be doing uh, beautification or exterior improvements that lift the whole neighborhood. And this event has been successful for many years. What have the outcomes been like? We survey homeowners after Rock the Block and we find that they feel more part of their neighborhood, that social connectedness, um, they're feeling safer in their neighborhood, and they feel like their homes are, are safer, they're proud to live there, they're proud of the work that they accomplished alongside of their neighbors. That's wonderful. And, and partnerships help make this event happen. Can you tell us a little bit about how crucial those partnerships are in neighborhoods? Yeah. Yeah, so we partner with a lot of the businesses, uh, other organizations. Uh, the Nina Menasha Police will be involved in this. Uh, the utilities will be involved helping homeowners get uh, low energy um, faucets and things like that. And then, of course, all of the business sponsors like Theta Care, um, they bring out volunteers and they help help financially because it's a big commitment financially, so they help with all of those things to make this possible. Oh, that's incredible. It's a tremendous event, great work that you're doing. We appreciate you taking time to explain it for us and, and just really talk about the impact that it can have. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. Now we'd like to take a deeper look at different kinds of housing needs. There isn't one single type of home that's right for healthy living. It's unique to each of us, just like living our best lives. These next two stories highlight additional types of inspired living. They show that there's no single definition of what it means to live life inspired. Some seniors may think that moving out of their family home marks a sad ending but finding the right fit can instead mean a new beginning for them. That's the case for residents of the Heritage, Theta Care's independent and assisted living community. Inspired living continues to flourish as these seniors find that special feeling of home and a community that fits their next phase of life. So let's hear from some of them in their own words. I moved in, I never looked back. We're glad when we left that we moved here. It feels like home here really does. I just wanted to be where I could be with people and feel like I was part of a family. That question was answered immediately. Everybody's so friendly that it doesn't take very long for you to get comfortable. And they have tons of activities here. Coffee hours, exercise classes. I served on a couple of committees, go for walks, lots of nice flowers places you can sit outside. It's uh, convenient to different stores like the grocery store and things. We're still pretty yeah. active. We yeah. have our own car and we do a lot with our kids, our daughters, right. families. One of the things that I really enjoy is being able to go down and sit at the table and have a meal with somebody. There's always somebody here to visit with. You can come independent, but if you do need to have some help, down the road, it is here and available to you. It's been just a wonderful experience. This feels like where I'm gonna live the rest of my life. This really feels like home, and I don't foresee <laughs> probably going, going anywhere else. No, <laughs> neither. Yeah. Next, we'll look at another kind of housing, 
people facing substance use disorder may require innovative transitional housing solutions as part of their recovery. That's where specialized residential treatment programs can come into play. Now, some might think of this as a time in a person's life as a dark phase, but this type of supportive living can help people rediscover that place of hope and light. The AdaCare partners with organizations to help support these treatment programs for those experiencing substance use disorder. One of those is Apricity. Apricity's Sober Living Residential Treatment Program provides a nurturing atmosphere where individuals can continue their recovery in a long-term supportive environment with others who are in similar situations. Today we're going to hear about the first-hand experience of Carissa. She's a resident of Ohana, one of the Apricity Women's Sober Living Houses. Carissa, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So if you will, just start out by telling us a little bit about your background and what led you to where you are today. Just kind of had, I guess you could say, like a rough childhood growing up. And just kind of as I got older, um, I guess, turned to um, drugs to kind of cope. Um, with the abandonment, um, I guess you could say, of both parents, I really snowballed um, and spiraled out of control. Um, I tried a few times getting sober. In the last seven years um, have been crazy. Um, but the last three have been something different. And my mom had actually, sorry, but um, my mom had actually asked me to make my funeral arrangements. Um, I have a nine-year-old son um, and that she takes care of um, until I can get myself together. But um, he asked me to write a letter detailing everything that I ever wanted to tell my son. When my mom asked me that, I kind of just was like, okay, it's you know, kind of the wake-up call. My tribe had actually helped me get into Casa Claire um, January 12th of this year. Um, and I did 30 days in Casa Claire, and they offer two levels of aftercare, um, like one transitional, and then the other one um, was kind of like their apartment program. So I did two months on each level of care before coming into sober living, and I entered sober living here at Ohana um, June 9th of the summer. So I'm coming up on three months of being here at Ohana. So how has living in a sober living community helped you in your recovery? Um, it has definitely helped me a lot. Um, people just like want to make you feel welcome and make you feel like you belong. Um, because I think everybody kind of knows how it feels to not really belong anywhere. Um, so I guess just having those friends that, um, are in the same, not the same boat as you, but are in the same storm heading to the same shore. So what do you, would you tell others who might be facing similar struggles like you've gone through? Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and just know that the sun always comes after the rain, but it's up to you. Like, you have to want that, and I think that's what's different this time around, um, is that I want this, and I want it for myself. Like, I have motivating factors of why I'm doing it, but ultimately, like, in the end, it's for me. Um, I have to do this. I stopped putting myself last, and I had to start putting myself first every time, because if I don't, it's me that loses um, and it's my son who gets hurt, um, as well as my family. We always think that we're alone when we're in active addiction, but it's not until we get sober and we're in a setting where we're surrounded by other people who sometimes share almost the same exact story. Um, so just to know like that you're not alone and that you do matter and that the world is a better place with, in, with you in it. I think that's a really good message for people. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us and providing that inspiration for others. We appreciate it, Carissa. Thank you. Those two stories show that inspired living can have lots of meanings depending on the individual. Regardless of your living arrangement, you can work to help make sure your home helps keep you healthy and safe. We checked in with ThetaCare nurse practitioner, Becky Philpot to get some tips we can all use to live our unique best life at home. Individuals in our community are living longer. I have more 90-year-olds and centurions than I've ever had before. And a huge part of your quality of life is being able to remain independent. 
ThetaCare at Home provides a lot of services to our community and they typically provide them in whatever home environment you're currently in. Whether that be their home in the community or in an apartment in an independent living facility, at an assisted living facility, or a skilled nursing facility. We're able to provide them with a skilled nurse once a week to help them manage their medications or after an acute hospitalization they may have physical therapy in their home for several weeks or several months in order to regain strength that they had previously lost. Our durable medical equipment is a big part of keeping people in their own home. It can be as simple as a wheeled walker and it can be as complex as having oxygen and all of its supplies in your home. But it also includes wheelchairs, hospital beds, sometimes even lifts. If you don't have the correct equipment to transfer and mobilize in your own home, we end up with more falls. People end up in the emergency room or even admitted into our hospitals. And so having Theta Care at home work with those individuals to maintain their independence is a huge part of maintaining one's quality of life. Great insights there from Becky. As we've shown today, home, whatever that looks like for you, plays a critical role in your health. As part of the Life Inspired Movement, we're proud to do our part to help address the issue of safe and stable housing. To get more tips and resources on healthy living, please visit thetacare.org slash lifeinspired to join the movement. At ThetaCare, our mission is to help you live your unique best life. And we want to know what kind of questions you have when it comes to your health care. Leave your questions and comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe so you see the very latest in this series.